Hello, welcome to Paint by Blunders. And we are looking at the Oroch Iron Jaws Ard Boys today. Uh, I have based these on the Crypt Boy scheme, but just put a little twist on it by adding more of the ivory bony sort of colors. So I'm gonna call these the Boner Boys. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you learn anything, enjoy it, then please do consider subscribing, like, leave a comment. Um, and yeah, hopefully see you on the next one. So here we are. This is our Ard Boy that we're gonna paint. Uh, I primed him in essentially just gross here. First up, we are gonna tackle the skin. We're gonna do it a little bit more basic than my Rager video, just because there's not as much skin and I don't wanna focus on it too much. This is Auric Flesh as the base coat. And we're just, as always, just trying to be careful, but no worries if not, mistakes happen and we can go in and clean it up and I will be making many mistakes doing the flesh on this. Uh, you may need to put two coats on. It doesn't have the greatest coverage I have found, but um, that's down to preference. I do like the effect sometimes. If it's a little bit thinner, then you wash it. It adds like a texture to it, in my opinion. But if you're going for that super clean box art type style of painting, then definitely give it two coats. And I'll just say this now, just in case, if you want it to be a bit deeper and you want to put more attention into the flesh, go Death World Forest as your base and build it up from there if you want even more shadows. Or alternatively, if you want to make it quicker, then just go with like Gut Ripper Flesh as the contrast paint. Either, either way you want to do it, it'll look great as long as you're happy with it. And that's the base coat of flesh down. And now we are going to start looking at the cream sections. And that's going to be the shoulder pads, the little motif at the top, knee pads, the grip on the weapon. And yeah, anything else you want to add to it, like the example that I've done on this, feel free to, to add more cream, take it away, because I like the fact with orcs that you can just, they're a bit ragtag, so you can just move it how you feel. I'm using pro acrylic dark ivory for this just because it's such a great mid-tone, it covers so well. And arguably you could do this after we do the dark shade of armor, it doesn't it doesn't matter too much it's just this is just the order i've done it this isn't necessarily the order you have to do it in it's just the order i've chosen to do it in also you might notice and please ignore the fact that i've done his uh little bit of cloth between his legs and the cloth on the back of his shoulders and his trousers that is a mistake because I went off my test model and I've changed it as I started doing this video. So with the cream done, I'm gonna go for an easy win now. All the leather buckles and straps, etc., and even his trousers, I'm gonna give a coat of Contrast Wildwood. Nice and thick, and I'm just gonna lump it on there. So with that done, we're gonna start working on what I wanted the cloth to be. And that is going to be Screamer Pink. So with the Screamer Pink done, we're going to start looking at the metallics. I'm going to use Vallejo Game Color Chainmail. Again, really nice little mid-tone. I'm just going to pick out the weapon, the little bits of chainmail that he's got. And also there's like rivet sections on the armor. Some of them I've painted cream on this guy, but again, the freedom of orcs or iron jaws. Uh, you can just paint them in the metal instead of the cream. You can just mix it up. 
And now that's done, we're going to start working on the armor. And for that, I'm going to use a mix of Incubi Darkness and Abaddon Black. But you can use any black, but Incubi Darkness is the main one. And I'm going to go in with a ratio of about 70-30 in favor of Incubi Darkness. If you did want a more darker, straight black tone, I would say use Black Legion Contrast and just go with the easy win there because the layering that we're going to do on this armor later on will still work with that contrast paint. It's just, it'd just be a flat black finish as opposed to this slightly bluey green tint. So now that's down, we can start shading this guy and bringing him to life a bit more. So I'm going to start with the flesh. And now I'm going to go with a 50-50 camo shade to green shade mix. And the reason I've done this, if any of you saw my Rager video, uh, I said about not covering all the skin um, because it makes layering a little bit more aggro later. On this, where there's not much skin visible, I wanted to show you just what it looks like and how you could leave it if you wanted it a bit more battle ready and you didn't want to put any more highlights on. I feel this wash over the skin works. And then the old faithful black wash by Pro Acrylic. We're going to start moving on to all of our dark armor sections. We're also going to do anything that we did in Screamer Pink. And we're also going to cover our metallics as well. And one quick note when you're doing this, it doesn't matter at all if your black wash hits any of your brown sections. All it's going to do is make them ever so slightly darker. I've just coated it over them anyway and with that done we're going to start looking at the cream armor sections and we're going to use a heavily diluted garagax sewer with contrast medium and i dilute this probably 20 percent contrast to 80 percent medium it's really heavy it's just tainting it really uh, and I recommend obviously going on the more diluted side because if it's not dingy enough then you can just do a second coat. Uh, one thing you might notice is I'm not too concerned about pooling. The only places that I try for the pooling not to be too severe is the shoulder pads. But obviously if it's something you don't like or you're thinking it's getting a bit too bogged down then just have a have a clean brush on hand and just start wicking it away. Now with that done, we're going to start looking at the other cream sections that aren't the armour, essentially. And I'm starting to begin that this wouldn't be a Paint by Blunders video without using Agrax Earthshade. And that is what we're going to do. Being very liberal with this wash, because I absolutely love it, as I always say. And here he is with all the washes down. I mean, this doesn't take long to get to this stage. You could easily battle ready. Looks great. You can dry brush it if you want to take it further. I'm going to take it further through highlights, uh, a few edge highlights, etc. So let's get it. So I'm coming straight back in with the original color, the dark ivory. And I'm just doing the raised edges just a good amount of water in the paint just to help it run smooth it's also incredibly hot in my room where i'm painting at the minute so it dries a lot faster than i'd like but yes just take your time i think these models are a little bit more forgiving with some of the uh, edges that you're trying to trace with this and also it's the same thing it's orcs so if you do a line that looks a little bit skew -ith, it's an orc. It was meant to be there. It's meant to be like that. And 
and this is where we are after that. We're now going to come in and just highlight up the flesh and all I'm doing is coming in with the base coat of Auric Flesh. A little bit of water, a little bit thinner than it was when I used it as a base. And we're just going to go in, yeah, avoiding the recesses and just uh, brightening it back up. Brush wise, I keep jumping between a size 2, a size 1 and for edging I drop to a size 0 and it's every time I've ever done one of these videos I jump between those three brushes and now that's done we're going to go in with the again the original base coat of Screamer Pink and just highlight back up those cloth sections so with that done we're probably at the section now which easily takes the longest and is easily the most tricky we're going to start edge highlighting the black armor and we're going to start with Thunderhawk blue now if you don't want to edge highlight every nook and cranny sort of thing I completely understand that as it is quite laborious uh, if you don't want to do that just pick out the highest edges it, uh, the way I would do it is if you're looking you know sort of 45 degrees down onto him and just pick out those edges because you don't need to do every one if you don't want to and as I say I'm sure you could probably get a very similar effect with some controlled dry brushing now after that first one's done we're going to come in with another one of Fenrisian grey and do the same again but just picking out less and just focusing more on the highest edges. And for those of you who haven't done edging before, you are just trying to use normally the side of your brush where you can and just trace that sharpest edge. So after that second highlight, I think he is good to go, but I'm gonna push him a little bit further to just show you how I would potentially do a hero model just to take it a bit further I wouldn't I personally wouldn't do this to every one of my art boys but the techniques as always carry over to your heroes so first up I'm taking pink horror and just doing a final edge highlight on all the screamer pink and then we're going to move on to a 50 50 mix of auric flesh with nurgling flesh or nurgling green uh, just to push that skin a little bit further uh, again just the highest points to just try and build that contrast and you may have noticed his shield's missing I'm painting his shield in the exact same way we're going to push the cream armour by adding just a little bit of white into that dark ivory and with the weapon I decided to give it an additional coat of Agrax Earthshade uh, just to really exaggerate how the Storm Host Silver affects it. And it's just broad, jagged strokes. So this is the guy pretty much done, ready for basing. But you may remember I've got a slight obsession with something called Streaking Grime. So I'm going to add a little bit of battle damage. So the way they work, I've just blobbed it over the bolts and rivets and then I'm going to give it five minutes and then I come back in with a little bit of white spirit on a paintbrush and I just drag it away and I start staining it and making it look a bit worn. I appreciate it's not something people do that often. It's not the standard hobby stuff. You could probably do a very similar effect with some watered down contrast paints. Um, I just really like playing around with this stuff, I think it's great. But it does get rid of the clean cut sort of box art look, um, it just depends what you want to go for. And once that's done, I'm going to do the final thing, I promise, and then I'll leave them alone. I'm going to just stipple some of the grime using a sponge just to add chipping to the cream 
And that's him done. I'm going to get him based, paint his eyes, and I'm calling it. And we're back. Little red eyes, and I've used AK's Texture Paint Desert for the base, and I've put a little bit of uh, pigment powder over the top. I've attached the shield. As you can see, it's exactly the same as the armor. And here is a couple of his Boner Boy Pals, just to show you what a squad might look like. 